626 Podcast. Yeah, we're back again. And we're in a different spot. I think we're just going to keep moving through our house till we find something Probably. that works. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I like the couch. It's comfy. Yeah. The table is easier to sit at. I don't know. This does. You can do like light stuff with this one. Yeah. That Well, I mean, we can do light stuff on the couch too. Eh. It doesn't, it works too. Um, but yeah, we're back on, what are we talking about today? Well, we are going you to. You had a very big. I know. Cause it, geez. it's like a, I don't know. Is this a transparent episode? I feel like it's not. I feel like you're making it more serious than it is. Um, probably cause I remember the feelings associated with. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we're talking about our biggest successes. Yeah. And our suckiest mistakes. So like the mistakes we've made in business or life or what? Um, or all the above? I guess all the above. I, I was, feel like that's a lot. I was kind of thinking business, but also when we initially made up the list of episodes, this was on the original list before we had made the shift. So I guess it's successes and suckiness mistakes in general. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's honestly whatever we want it to be. Yeah. Sorry. I thought we were more prepared for this guy. <laughs> but I'm like, so that the original intent for the episode was business. Yeah. Because we were a entrepreneur podcast. Now that we have shifted into a more, you know. Yeah. It's, personal. There's more stuff to it. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I still feel like our business is tied to our personal. So. Uh-huh. I mean, we can talk about both. So, I mean, okay, well, what's your biggest success? Um, wah, wah, I know. Wah, I don't, wah. I feel like the biggest successes are going to be hard because like everyone's such a critic of themselves. So it's like, hard to, like you don't really, success. You, like you don't really feel like oh, I'm successful. I did a successful thing, you know? Cause it's like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but you're a great mom and wife and that's successful. Those, you know, you're what? a talented photographer. Those yes. are all successes. I didn't even think about them as such. I think because they're so ongoing, like in my brain, I'm like, my biggest success was da 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 because I did it and it's done. But then like, I mean, you're right. Like current acting on type things, like currently ongoing things can be a success too. Yeah. I think that's the thing that people kind of forget is they forget that like, Success doesn't have to necessarily be a monetary value attached to it or a positional value. Success can be just like achieving something that not, I mean, listen, even if it's a small one, a win's a win, right? That's fair. That is true. Yeah. So we look for those little wins. I mean, I'm speaking from experience because I get caught <laughs> up on like, if I didn't do X, Y, and Z, then did I really I'm succeed? Not successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're always going to have where I'm not, okay. You're always going to look at something and go, I'm not where I want to be. But that's fine. That's a motivator. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a depressing, uh, I'm not where I want to be. It's a, okay, well, how do I get there? And that's the difference is, okay, you can be sad and go, I am not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But if that's where it stops, then it's going to be an anchor. If it's going to be, if it's something where I'm not where I want to be, but I want to figure out how to get to where I want to be, then it can be a motivator. Mm. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the difference. So like, that's the little tidbit about success. I in love that mind. little bit of a sprinkle. Yeah. Little okay. nugget. Yeah. Okay. So with that, what are your greatest successes? Well, I mean, obviously my ongoing successes are like, I mean, I would love to think that I am a great mom. Like our child is I a wonderful success. I made that. We, we, I mean, I helped. I grew it. Yeah. I grew him. Yeah. I grew his fingers and his toes. His little, right. I just love him so much. Yeah. Um. So that I honestly like birthing a child. Yeah was really cool. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think and that a was a, a big part of like, um, figuring out who, like that's a success. Like you being a mom is figuring out is, is it success? You yeah. being, but I also think it goes beyond that. I mean, you're a talented photographer, you're a part of our business. Like mm. those are all successes. More of like, so from like a company standpoint and like a business standpoint, I would say I have been, I, my work has been published twice now. Yeah. So like that's, that's cool. Yeah. Like it is not, I mean like obviously being published is not the same as like what it used to be because we don't, you know, there's not a lot of like magazines and like, 
you know. Does anybody have a magazine? Does anybody get magazines? <laughs> have you still? been to Publix and seen their checkout aisles? But um, the t- stupid tabloids up. will never die, by the way. Which is interesting. They will think- never die. And I feel like everyone looks at them. You think they would have been replaced by now with like, I don't know, anything? I mean, but the I'm internet, like, Facebook? but you sit there. Sorry, this is a sidetrack. Your but aunt's like, Facebook feed? You sit- Not your aunt. I mean, in general, aunt. <laughs> <laughs> but like you sit there and you like look at these things and you know they're a lie. Yeah. You know, everything on them is a lie Yeah. for the tabloids. But yet people still buy them and they still sell them in stores. Like, yes. it just kills me. Anyways, people love the drama. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, being published. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about being published. That's a success, too. That like, is a success. That was something like that's something that I'm very like it took me a while, mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. And, you know, I did. And this kind of like taps into. You know if you don't know how to do something or you're not sure about something or whatever, like tapping into like asking someone who has that experience yeah, and like just being like, Hey, what the crap do I do? I've been trying at this. I mean, I mean, I had submitted, gosh, maybe 15 weddings Yeah, it'd been a lot. over the last few years. Yeah. And they had all been rejected, which wah, wah, that sucks. And that's not a testament to my work because that's a personal preference. And like, you know, but also constantly getting turned down yeah. sucks. Yep. And then you have that imposter syndrome and then it starts coming in. Am I actually good at this? Like, am I as good as the other people who they keep posting? Am I like, you know, that's but, the, that's the part I think, I mean, I struggle with is imposter syndrome. It's a bad one. We've talked about it before. Oh, imposter syndrome sucks. But it's a convincing thing where like, if you make a mistake, it convinces you that even though you've had like 50 wins, it's the one loss that goes, Oh, we're not legitimate. Like, okay. We'll use the Jaguars for example, because <laughs> you know, we're a teal podcast. Um, Hey-o. but like, or the reality is like when the Jags start making good runs, the soon as they have one loss, like last year's, um, they had a great run and then they lost like really badly to the lions. And, and I think there went, was like a few losses after that. And no, then it was just the Lions. It loss. was only the yeah, Lions. So they, they beat the Ravens, lost to the Lions, and everybody went, oh, never mind, same old Jags. We're just the Jags. It's the same old Jags. But yeah. it's like we'd seen leading up to that a lot of success. And granted, there were a lot of losses there. Mm-hmm. And then as they ran through the playoffs, all the way through the playoffs, these wins, and then that first playoff game with, you know, Trevor throws three picks and everybody's, or four interceptions, or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, oh, never mind, same old Jags. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, but we just beat all of these teams in a row. Yeah. And now it's the same old. And it's like, that's how we often operate is like, we, we end up seeing things as, oh, never mind. That one loss negates all those other victories. Yeah. And I think that's the part of like, for us, I know we've kind of started journaling and writing, like not so much journaling, but like our Monday meeting will like go over like, okay, what are we grateful for? What are some wins? Like those kind of things. What are some goals? What can I tell myself this week? Like what's the message to myself? Whether it's like just be calm and breathe. Yeah. I think those are super helpful to to try to really map out, okay, what is success and what is a failure? What is, what do these look like? And it gets your thoughts out too, which is like, I mean, we've been over that so many times about like from a therapeutic standpoint, Mm -hmm. And like a mental health standpoint, getting those things out of your brain and those conversations out of your brain and to someone else Mm -hmm. is like, that's a big thing. And it helps a lot. Yeah. And I think what it goes down into is, um, like when you're, when it goes back to that goal setting thing we talked about last Mm -hmm. season, which was like, okay, set realistic goals. Mm -hmm. Like, um, okay. If your goal is to, I'm going to use a crazy, like I'm going to use one right now. Okay, my goal is to eventually start shooting under under eighty again for golf. You know, that's the ultimate goal. You know, that was before shoulder surgery, before not playing for a long time. Those are the goals. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's a that's a difficult goal. That is an incredibly hard goal. All I can think of is the Mr. Meeseeks episode. Mr. Meeseeks. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get a stroke. What did he want to stroke off of? He shaved his- like three strokes off his game. <laughs> um, which is insane. Oh, Jerry. So yeah, so like that's okay, how do we how do we go about that? Like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm not gonna set an unrealistic timetable. I'm not gonna be like, all right, well, in three months I'm gonna be That's shoot. more of like an eventual goal. Correct. So, so then you can set timeline mini goals. Mini goals and wins, which are like, okay, well how how do I achieve that mm-hmm. to be a, to make that a win, to make that successful? Let's find many wins along the way. So a mini win along the way would be, okay, well, I need to play golf more mm-hmm. and I need to practice more in order to be able to get better. Yeah. I need to find a chance to get a lesson. I need to 
you know, chip and putt. I need to find my weaknesses in the game. Okay, well, then let's break it down further. Okay, let's try to get one less in a month. That's a goal. Boom, now I can achieve that. And that's not a thing that requires you anything other than monetary value. Yeah. Okay, well, that's step one. Step two, I want to be able to practice more. All right, well, I'm going to start setting aside time each week to practice. Okay, well, then I also want to... Um, I want to, you know, fix a weakness in my game, my putting the week. Okay. Well then I need to, in those practice times, I need to, instead of hitting, I need to putt. And now you've gotten, you you're actually built up a method. You're fitting little building blocks. Yeah. And those are little wins that lead yeah. to the big win. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem is a lot of us, like a lot of creatives in general will come in and go, I want to be a DP that's directing like all star movies and films, or I want to be making this much money by the age of this. I want to do those things. Okay. Mm. Well, those are great goals, but they're not going to, you're going to miss that if you, cause like, okay, I want to make a million dollars by age, whatever, 30 or something. No. Right. <laughs> okay, great. So unless you're planning on robbing a bank at age 29, <laughs> like what steps are you taking? What are you going to do to get there? Yeah. What steps are you taking to practically get to age 30 at a million dollars? Okay. Yeah. Well, I need to be investing. I need to do these things. These are ways to ensure that, you know, I don't just stumble into some money somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a big part of that. And uh, that's kind of like the way you can look at a success and a win and like set yourself up for it. Cause yeah. You do have to identify it. I think we're a little off track of the, like, what um, are our successes and well, what are Well, I mean, but it all, like, ties into it because it's, like, that was my whole thing was, like, with that success of being published, I credit a lot of that yeah. to my friend Natalie. Yeah. Who is in the industry of, yeah. like, well, I mean, she she does a lot of, she mainly focuses on, like, family and, like, couples yeah. sessions and stuff now. But I always looked up to her. Yeah. Loved her work. I have loved her work from the start. And I've told her this too. Cause I'm just like, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I love you. But she's like, yeah, she's good. Yeah. She's really good. She's so talented. And I remember asking her and like, even then, cause this is an example of like, I've been doing this for 12 years and I yeah. still took an opportunity to learn from someone because well, yeah, that's what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's and it's on. like, I don't, I can't be afraid to ask, even though I've been in the industry, I've worked a ton of weddings. It doesn't mean that I do them the exact same way as somebody else. And so getting a chance to second shoot with her Mm -hmm. and have opportunities to like learn from her, um, was a big help to that because it was like, I was able to ask her, okay, well, how did you get published? Like, cause some, I'm obviously not doing something right or I'm missing something in my gallery or I'm like, like what you've been published, like what, you know, many times, what, like, what am I missing? And she just kind of was like, okay, well, do you do this? Well, I haven't done that. Okay. Well, they're really big about this. Like yeah. this is what they look for in my experience and stuff. And it's like, and then learning time, like management? time management with yeah. her and like how she does things oh, and like timeline management, time yeah. management. Yeah. like that type of stuff. And like what she focuses on detail wise. And so, I mean, she's, and she was an open book, which I was very thankful for. And I'm so happy that I have, you know, someone that I can learn from yeah, and someone who's willing to work with me and talk to me. But it was like that because I was willing to ask her and you know, kind of just be like, look, I don't know what to do. Like mm-hmm. I have hit a wall. I yeah. have hit a wall. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming from cars three. But it's like, that was, that's a big deal. And like that comes into, you know, I'd credit her a lot for that one. Cause yeah. she taught me a lot and yeah. I, I've learned a lot from her. And so it's like having those successes. Now I'm like, okay, what's my next one? Cause I have a big goal that I want to do. But I don't, I got to look for my mini blocks because <laughs> it's a big goal that I want. Yeah. So. Um, so on the topic of learning, because we kind of went through that, okay. like learning, one of the easiest things everybody says is like, okay, learn from your mistakes. Mm. So what are our suckiest mistakes that we've learned from? Mm, mm, suckiest mistakes, suckiest mistakes. I mean, I can talk about like, I think early on from a business standpoint, it was not vetting clients well. Oh my Lord. You know, it was not <sighs> like we were really taking on. And when we, at one point we were doing 50 plus weddings a year. I think we did one year. You know, we we did like 54, 50, 54 weddings in a year, which if you're doing the math, there's more than 50. There's, there's more weddings than weekends. It, yeah. 
So we were doing two, three weeks. Was it 54 or 56? It's like 56, I think. 56. I remember looking at it at the end of the year and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was a huge mistake because of the fact that like we just couldn't finish them. Like mm. our backlog was, I mean, it was years of a backlog at that point. Like it took forever to get out of that. I think and it's all just of us the, were, it is the two of like, I mean, well now we do have like, you know, we have other some people that team would, members like, that together. can yeah. help whenever like things get a little too backed up. But at the time yep, it was, we were in that of mindset us. of like, no, it's our work. We have to do it. Like I it's mean, not, yeah. you know, and it was madness. Cause at that yeah. point we had our whole family stepping in to help because it was so backed up. And we were doing stuff. Your My mom, mom was editing. Was editing My weddings. mom was managing things. Your, like, yeah. Your mom was, was managing emails at one point. She was going to meetings with you like while we my were, mom was like editing videos we have a talented was, family it was yes we have super talented family. but it was but like and then i believe there was one wedding that we shot and my parents came and shot it with us oh my gosh did they did they uh-huh did your dad come too yes because oh, wow. he stood in the back with the the like yeah, a right. cam we couldn't yeah and then like my mom was operating the side cam and then like you were on the glide cam at the time yeah and um i think i was doing photo I think so. Or it, something like that. It was, yeah. it was madness. In the it weekend. was insane. We were like, taking on too many. We were also doing many. them. I think we were doing them for like a thousand dollars. Well, I think we were also like, it was that. And we were also chasing money. We were chasing. I wanted a lot for of For sure. Yeah. And so like that tied into it. Cause it, at that time it was. And I was still working at Best Buy. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I was still working at Best Buy during all this. We weren't even married. No. We weren't even engaged. Which is commitment from your parents to even just go along with this. Uh, yeah. Which is your nuts. Girl, your, your daughter's boyfriend. Your, your daughter's boyfriend. And then like, you know, I was just crazy. Yeah. But yeah, it's like we, we went through, we did all of that. I mean, good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that was an exhausting year. But it is like. That was definitely, I would say, learning the value of not every client yeah. is going to be for you. Just no. like you're not going to be for every client. And exactly. that's okay. You know, it's like flavors of ice cream. Some people like Rocky Road. Some people like other flavors. Some people like mint chocolate chip. Okay, don't don't make fun of my <laughs> mint chocolate chip. Like some people like different flavors of things and it's okay. Like we all have different tastes and yes. it's like, that's fine. You're not going to be the photographer. You're not going to be the videographer. You're not going to be the graphic designer. You're not going to be for everyone blank for everyone. Yeah. And that's okay. And, you can't be. and that was something that we had to learn because it was like, at that time we were like, we got to be top. We got to be top. We got to be top. We got to be the one. We got to be the one that everyone wants. Everyone yeah. wants everyone. And it was like, looking back at that, if I could go back to sweet, sweet past Scott and Tori, <laughs> I would just cradle their sweet little faces and just okay. say, no. Please stop. Yeah, we would have dodged <laughs> a lot of barn weddings, a lot of very bad clients. Oh, my goodness. Granted, we got lucked out. I mean, I, I'd say over 90% of our clients were yes. good. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, there were wonderful. definitely a few clients in there that were just not a joy to work with mm. or just didn't mesh well with us. And that's like... It's more so because of that. So yeah. if they aren't a joy to work with, it's because we don't mesh well. Yeah. And we used to not require like a FaceTime meeting. There were a few that we even booked without meeting the couple. Yep. Mom and booked us or something. Lord have mercy. We would meet them like the day of their wedding. Yeah, which was just not which the way to was do it. Aco Taco because yeah. that was before like I mean Instagram was a thing, but it wasn't as yeah. big of a tool. Cause like now I can like I mean, I'm showing my colors, but now I can like yeah. I can look someone up and yeah. be like, Oh, okay, that's what you look like. So that way I can know like, you know going on an engagement yeah. session. Like if you've met with them, but I haven't, like I yeah. can see them, but we didn't even have that. And I think, I mean, like you said, it was, we were chasing money and like, that's where you can get a false success because yes. like back then, you know, we did, you know, if we're doing averaging a thousand dollars a wedding and we're doing 50 something weddings, we were, I mean, you have a eight, it was like 20, it was like 19, 18, making $50,000 a year. That's wild. You know? Like, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. This is awesome. Like, We're living or are we dying? Like, and I was like, that's <laughs> success. But now, like, I look back on that and I was like, no, that's not worth it at all. Like, no. you know, we can do that in a month. Like, I don't want to do that in a year yeah. and that much work. And my thing is, like, I love, here's why I love, I don't like saying vetting people because that sounds so not. I mean, it is it is in it, a sense. Like, it you're is in a sense. Interviewing, you're interviewing was what Nick said in his episode, yes. which and I thought was I really good. I love that. You, I like interviewing clients, yeah. um, before like they decide to book with us if they do, because I like knowing 
that like we have a good relationship with them. Like, because working with couples that genuinely love you and that love your work and y'all can get along and joke and like, you know, you have the same sense of humor and they're so like, they're just willing to do, you know, anything and they're like on board for it and they love this and they love your work and they're so excited to work with you. Mm-hmm. That makes their wedding day so much more fun. And it doesn't just apply to weddings. Like I have, there are agencies that I give discounts to, to work with them, even though I know I could make more with another agency. Because you enjoy. Because I enjoy working with them. Yeah. I know that the environment on set is going to be good. Yes. I know that I'm not going to deal with a lot of stress. And I know that I can just like, we can get it done. And that is, you know, worth it all. Yeah. Because you want to enjoy what you're doing. Because yeah. that is a quick road to getting burnt out too. Yeah. Is like just taking anyone, even if you don't mesh with them, because then you're yeah. like, emotionally drained because you got to figure out how to communicate with them because it's going to be off because you don't mesh well. I mean, it's a whole thing, Yeah. but getting to like work with a couple or a client or an agency or whoever that you enjoy working with, they trust you, Mm -hmm. you trust them. It's more of like, you look forward to like, okay, yeah, we have their thing today. Like I get to do this and I get to work with them and we get to do this and I wonder what we're going to do. And I wonder what we're going to create. And then it gets your, like, it gets your, your creative motors going. Yeah. And it's like, I always look at it this way. It's like, I have a master's degree. I have a great background and like, I have a really, I have a good resume. If I wanted to make good money and be miserable, I would just go back to corporate world. Yeah. I would just go back to like working in another job. I would use my degree. I would go in that Avenue, Mm -hmm. but I don't because I want to enjoy what I'm doing. So because of that, I'm going to find what I can do there. Now I do want to give like practical, like actual mistakes that were made that you guys can avoid because I think that's an important part of this. I mean, that would be one was the, yeah, just booking anyone, (laughs) booking anyone, not interviewing your Um, clients. The other one is like manage the gear you purchase. So like, (laughs) I I think if you guys watch the, Seriously. Um, <laughs> the episode with Nick, he actually goes into a great thing at the end about um, like, okay, in the grand scheme of things, like your quality of work is the last thing that matters to mm-hmm. a client. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, that's not high on that list. So does the gear really matter in the sense? And, and to an extent it does. Like there are things like when I'm on set, it's important to have the equipment I have to be able to pull off the project. Yes. But it's also about being focused on what you're getting equipment wise. Mm -hmm. Here's what I mean by that. Early on, I remember we were trying to do everything. So I was buying video equipment and photography equipment left and right. Hard drives, laptops. Drones. I had had just started getting a few lights, but not really getting into lights. Yeah. My thing was I wanted nice lenses, nice cameras, and then drones because I thought drones were going to be the biggest thing, which they are huge. And I remember buying the mm-hmm. Inspire 2 Pro or Inspire Pro. You mean the Behemoth? Yeah, it was like a six, seven thousand dollar drone. That was huge. huge. And I I ended up spending I meant I ended up spending more on backpacks and equipment to travel with it than I did on the current drone we have. Yeah. And I did not fly it very often. No. Because it was such a pain in the butt. It was meant to have two pilots. It was massive. I took it to Hawaii and it got stuck in, got a little bit of sand in it and couldn't fly anymore. No, it broke. We had to send it off for repair. And we had to go take it and we get it repaired. It was the worst purchase I ever oh, made. it was awful. Hands down. And I think it took me years to pay it off because I charged it to a credit card with high interest. It was a mistake I made. <laughs> One of the only ones. I, I'm, I'm granted, I didn't make a lot of those. Mm. But I just thought that that was going to take us to the next level. So, and I wanted to flex the gear that we could have. And I bought it and it was a huge mistake. So if there's ever a thing that you're thinking of, like I made a, here's your thing. Be smart with your, you don't need to spend it. No. If your quali- clients are happy with the quality of work you're getting, they're getting, then like generally there's not really any gear out there that's going to make it that much better. I would say the only time really to like purchase new gear or something is yeah. like, obviously if your stuff is extremely outdated, Like, yeah, like that would be a thing. But also if you start taking on a different type of work. Okay. So let me elaborate. We mainly did weddings Mm -hmm. for a while. Yeah. A long while, a decade. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hated saying that. Um, we mainly did weddings for that time. Then we started doing more, more commercial. corporate commercial type stuff. So those are two different beasts yeah, in and of their own selves. But with the 
corporate stuff and like that type of stuff, yeah. you need lighting because it is commercial grade. Yeah. And it's normally done in a studio style. Yeah. It's not like, you know, uh, yeah. outdoors, natural light, and I, you know. Yeah. And I don't know that you necessarily need lighting. Like, I, I get what you're saying. But for us, for y- us, yes. we did. What I was going to explain um, was like, so we made the transition and started getting into lighting because that affected more of like what our work was. And that actually does more than your cameras ever will. Uh-huh. That being said, if I was doing it again, I would spend more money on the support equipment and less money on the lights. Because there's still mm-hmm. a slew of lights I got rid of that I mm-hmm. didn't need mm-hmm. because we just got them out of one because lights lighting has changed drastically in ten years, but two because there were things I purchased that I thought would be good because they were just bright and it was like no you gotta understand the practical difference like yeah. learning the difference between a panel and like an actual like the like one of these six hundred Ds that we have up like learning the difference between those like when to use those like what equipment like I'd still probably invest more in my grip equipment which is like my C stands. My, you know, my diffusion, well, all of those things. you know, the combo things. stand, which I just I learned several. what that was. <laughs> yes, we have several combo stands. But, like, those are all things that, like, can go there. But even then, all of that can be rented for most places. Ooh, that's true. And it's like, is it that essential? Like, no client. Like, how often are you shooting? Yeah, like, so, like all of my clients, except for a couple, like, there's a charge for me to bring my gear anyway mm-hmm. and I can just rent that stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's, but that's why I'm like, okay, don't get caught up on the gear train. Like that's yeah. not what's going to hold you back from being successful. If you don't have the clientele, there's like, always a way apart from like the red, which was like when we purchased that, that gave us like, some clientele popped up because of the red. Yeah. Because you know, there were other red users that needed it. There were things like that. Those things have, and happened. it was on such back order and like, there's not a lot of people in Jacksonville that have it. And yeah, yeah, that was a big help there. So, like that, but that was a rare occurrence. Mm-hmm. So I say that is like our suckiest mistakes were usually that round. Like the other spending thing, too much. Yeah. The other thing was like, you're not an expert in everything and it's okay to not be an expert in everything. Like you can acknowledge you're not an expert in everything and just kind of roll with that. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that comes from just acknowledging that like, okay, I'm not an expert in everything. I don't, I'm not able to do it all. Like you don't necessarily have to be the one doing your taxes. You can find somebody to do that. Like that was one of the things I wish I'd given up sooner was like account, yeah. like our taxes. I still do the accounting, but it, it took me asking questions. You know, I asked our friend Jacob, like, Hey, I know I'm doing this wrong. Show me how to do it right. Yeah. Um, and that's like acknowledging. Cause he went to school yeah. for that. Like, yeah. He's an accountant. I'm not. Yeah. Like, I needed somebody smarter okay. than me. <laughs> yeah. You have to acknowledge like, I always operate on like the minds. It's the, it's the thing from Spider-Man where it's like, never apologize for being the smartest one in the room, but also never think you're the smartest one in the room. Yeah. Like you should never apologize for being smart, but also you shouldn't always assume that you're the smartest one. There's always somebody who has a better expertise because you can't possibly be an expert in everything. Yeah. And like, I know a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, that's what I love is learning, but there are certain areas that I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert in. I'm not going to know more about taxes than an accountant. I'm not going to know about accounting practices more than an accountant because it's not something I'm interested in or I'm going to invest time in. Mm -hmm. So find somebody who's an expert in that area let them either do it or you can learn from them what you need to learn, but don't, don't try to do the jack of all trades thing in that area. Well, then you'll end up being a master of none. So yeah, which I mean, the whole phrase is, you know, jack of all trade and master of none better than a master of one, um, which is a good thing, but you also just don't want to end up where you're overloaded and you're doing a ton of stuff and you're not able to function. Well then you suffer and what you're doing suffers. Yeah. And it's like that's then then you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So but, what what do you feel? I mean, because we can start wrapping up here. Mm. Like, what else do you feel is like a big? I mean, what did you have a giant failure or anything that you can think of that you want to share? I'm, I'm positive I did do, <laughs> but I can't. I'm trying to like remember. Cause I feel like the way my brain works is if I make a huge mistake, I like once I, once it's done and I'm past it, it goes yeah. boop and I never have to feel anxiety about it again. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, obviously spending, I mean, spending a lot of money on stuff. I do get caught up in, I don't know if this is like a biggest mistake, but I've had to catch myself because there was at one point I was like, I wanted an R3. Yeah, you wanted an R3 pretty bad. Which, yeah, which goes to like spending money yeah. on things you don't need. And I was like, I was so, you know, I really want an R3. I really want an R3. I really want an R3. I want an R3. You know, and like that, because that was the new camera. It was a big deal. It was all this stuff. 
And then like the more that we looked, I mean, good Lord, that camera is like what? Six grand. It's so overpriced. It's so overpriced, but I wanted it. Yeah. And I just like, and it took me a while, like to kind of realize the longer we put off buying it, which you were like, we're going to find a way to buy it. Like, if yeah, that's, I'll get you whatever you want. You know, you never, you never ask for things like, and you don't normally, like, you don't get a lot of new equipment. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, you were like, however, we will figure it out. Like, you know, and I was like, oh my God, okay, thanks. And like, in the process of trying yeah. to like figure out how to get it, I remember like kind of realizing, oh my gosh. I don't need this. Yeah. <laughs> I just want it. Like, yeah. I just want it for clout. Like I, I really, cause I, I have never had like a camera that I've been like, yeah, it's my camera. Suck it. Mm-hmm. You know? And like, I was so like, yeah, I want an R3. I have an R3. It's the top dog camera. Yeah. But in reality, it doesn't really work for anything that I need a camera for. Like yeah. I'm not out there shooting sports stuff. I'm not shooting yeah. video stuff by myself that I would need my own equipment. Yeah. I'm not like, you know, doing any of the high speed stuff that I need that it was really good for. Like yeah. I didn't need it. I didn't need it. No, but just something you wanted and you, but it was something like that you... I wanted. Yeah. And so it was like learning or realizing like, Ooh, dang, like, yikes that would have not been a great purchase you know and it's like so kind of I guess learning from that of like going back to the gear thing of is this really something I need and I mean I was just telling our son this last night (laughs) because he's going he's got our um, I have our dish towel and I'm like drying our dishes and he's going mommy I need towel I need it mommy I need towel and I'm like we need to discuss the differences between want want and and need. need Okay, because you yeah. want the dish towel. Mommy needs the dish towel. I think if you can figure out the difference between want and need in business, you're going to succeed a yes. lot more than you'll fail. Yes, because yeah. it's like taking a second and going, okay, do I need this camera? Like, yeah. or do I just want it? Mm-hmm. And in that case, I just wanted it. Yeah. I didn't need it. I didn't need it. So, you know, we ended up getting, you know, my R6 and I love my R6 to bits and pieces. Yeah. And like I was able to get, cause one of the things that I was like, I have to have the R3 because it's got the grip and I yeah, can just I take up or I can take vertical pictures like this instead of like this. And it was like, we ended up just getting a handle for me mm-hmm. to put it on the R6 and it's been a game changer for me. Yeah. But like, I mean, I didn't, we saved so much money. Got a yeah. high quality camera yeah. that does everything I need it to do. And that's money that got to go into our pocket versus exactly. to the business. Exactly. And like that helps as far as like paying your bills, being able to take a vacation, yeah. being able to like, you know, relax yep. or, you know, get a special dinner, or, you know, anything. So that was definitely something that yeah. I learned that was almost a big mistake. <laughs> Lessons but, learned. You know, I mean, you learn from it. So well, I hope us talking about successes and failures that we've had has been somewhat educational for you guys. And you guys can feel like, hey, it's OK to make mistakes. It's OK to have a few mess ups. It's OK to learn as you go. As long as you learn from them. Yeah. And it's also OK to look for some wins. It's OK to say you succeeded. So that's kind of what I think we were hoping to accomplish with this episode. <laughs> I hope we did. Hope we did. Let us know. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. If you enjoy the 626 podcast, the best thing you can do for us is to share it with a friend and leave a five-star review. It helps us a lot to get discovered. And be sure to check us out on Instagram at 626podcast.